So on this episode of the Leader Smith Podcast, we'll be talking with my good friend, Jeff Carlucci. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, an interesting topic, leadership at school. And uh, Jeff and I uh, work together at this phenomenal school called Stonebridge School, and you're going to hear all about it. In a world of incompetent bosses, micromanagers, and petty tyrants, you are listening to The Leader Smith. Now, here is your host, Darren Gertis. Okay, so I am here with uh, Jeff Carlucci. He was the English teacher across the hall from me when I was teaching history and government and economics at Stonebridge School in Chesapeake, Virginia. Uh, Jeff uh, taught me the, this whole idea that I wasn't teaching uh, a subject, I was teaching people. And that was phenomenal. It, it, it changed the way that I functioned from that point forward. And I really appreciate that. Um, and then, you know, I said, hey, Jeff, let's let, come back again. Let's talk about all those leadership things that we learned at Stonebridge. I mean, all the things that went into uh, working at that institution, because it was a very different place. Um, Stonebridge is not your average school. It was founded, it's a little classical Christian school, and it, it was founded intentionally to be different. Its intention in its founding wasn't, you know, to be about leadership, but leadership was a big core of what it became. And uh, so, I, so Jeff, you were uh, not just the English teacher across the hall, but eventually you became the, the upper school principal, mm -hmm. correct? I did. Yes. Okay. And so, so you're, you're better situated and you've been there how many years? Like I was only there for six years, um, before I went I'm, to Liberty. So I've been at Stonebridge for 23 years where it's beginning my 23rd year here. And actually at some point for about a four year period, I was headmaster. I didn't really seek it out, just kind of had to fill in. And then it, it continued on until I had the option to go back in the classroom because I love teaching. I love students. I understand. I was a, the uh, graduate programs director. And at a certain point, I was like, you know, I got my PhD to teach. I mean, yeah. that, that's really where my heart was. It wasn't to do this administrative stuff. Um, I appreciated having the opportunity to have a leadership role and be able to help uh, make lives better for my faculty and my students. But um, yeah, I mean, my heart was teaching. So, okay. So um, tell us, you know, things that you saw. I mean, I have my own stories, but let's just kick that around. Uh, what we saw ab about leadership specifically at Stonebridge. One of the things I think that we do, at least I think we do differently than other schools, is we sincerely give the students the opportunity to lead. Mm -hmm. And this means that things may lack polish. If an adult leads it, it may not look as an adult leading, it will look great. A student leading it, they're learning how to lead. They're learning how to be uh, for the people looking at them and what they're leading, but they're also learning how to lead people to take responsibility. And sometimes when that happens, things fall through the cracks. You have to be willing to let them lead. Why? Because you're teaching them how to lead. You don't just send them off by themselves. You are, as a faculty, we are there to mentor them. And that's something we'll talk about later. But we're there to mentor them. But if they simply, if you simply make it look good, then I think, and this is my personal opinion, I think that the goal of the leadership changes and it becomes something about we can show. Look how nice this looks, as opposed to look at the growth in this individual who, who will go from leading, maybe not great this time, to leading better next time and preparing them for leadership later on. Yeah. And so um, what I was thinking about as you were talking was uh, my, my little mock Congress so as you yeah. remember, when I was there, I, um, I had them, uh, the freshmen, sophomores, and seniors were part of the House of Representatives, and the government class was the Senate, and we would operate in parliamentary pr procedure and pass bills and all kinds of things. And it was fascinating that when somebody first came into a leadership position, many, many times they just fall flat. Listen to me. This was my idea. The house will be in order and, and nobody's listening to them and, and they don't understand why like just because you said something doesn't mean that everybody's going to follow you because leadership isn't like in, in the movie that's it you make a great speech and everybody follows you but that's not it and they're learning like how to how leadership is based on relationships and 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 how um you know it's not just the best idea that carries the day and there's much more that goes on to than just making a big speech and being followed 
Um, but they have to learn through that messy process, as you were just describing. Yeah. We have so many opportunities for leadership. We call them prefectships, mm -hmm. where they can lead in our chapel. They're the, the worship leaders. They're the uh, spiritual life leaders for the school. But we have social prefects. We have athletic prefects and property prefects. And we give them the responsibility for it. A, a result of that is they care for the physical plant, they care for what's happening because they are invested in it and it reflects who they are and they're learning how to do it. Another thing that I like about it, it allows students who may not be as strong athletically or academically to begin to grow in an area where they may have strength. And I that's think that's really important. And this whole idea of this built-in leadership experience along the way, like there are all these opportunities that were built in and they need to do, I mean, so my, my daughter and I were talking about the minimum wage the other day. And we're talking about how, well, you know, you can't really live on that as a, you know, whole, your family. That's not the idea. The minimum wage isn't supposed to, I mean, if you're 25 and you're trying to, you know, raise your family on the minimum wage, you made a wrong turn somewhere in life. You're supposed to be a minimum wage when you're like 15, 16, 17, and then you're supposed to grow beyond that. And that's kind of like what these prefectships are doing. They're giving you this opportunity to lead so that you kind of make your mistakes, learn how this works, and then you can go on to bigger and bigger things yeah and and i think that's important for I, what i think you're referring to is there is a value in waiting for your opportunity but there's also a value in learning how to follow mm -hmm. and i think a great follower or supporter of a leader is able to walk in more humility as they support the leader preparing them to walk in humility as a leader and i think that that waiting for things early on is, is really important. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that, go ahead. I know, I was, I was just going to say, um, I was going to ask you to shift gears over, and you, I see you wearing the uh, Stonebridge uh, soccer shirt. And yes. so you were the soccer coach. Tell me about mm -hmm. what you saw out on the field relating to leadership. Well, that's really interesting because there's several types of leaders. So one of the things I do in keeping what we've said, when we change and we go into a new season, which God willing, we're going to have in a few weeks um, in soccer as the coach, we elect new captains every year. And one of the things that is important, uh, even not just for captains, but for new positions on the team, new juniors and seniors who are rising up as being upperclassmen, they have a role that they have to take. Mm -hmm. And I try to step back from that early on. I tell them what the role is. I help them to see it. But I try not to fill that because they need to walk into it. And yeah. I'll be honest with you. It takes one to three games for it to happen. <laughs> and if it doesn't happen, I mean, I'm prompting, I'm telling them. But at some point, it has to happen. And if a captain doesn't do it, you can see another, another student mm -hmm. is filling that role because there is a responsibility. So... Again, it goes back to you have to step back. As an adult, it's not about my polish. It's about allowing them to lead. And then when they do, Darren, it's spectacular. Yeah. Um, they set up all the they set up all practices. They clean up from all practices. They have responsibility for the field as far as cleaning it up afterwards. But they own it and they lead. And it's yeah. it's a great thing. So, so what's been the uh, whether on the in the classroom and just in school on the soccer field anywhere what's been the most interesting leadership uh story that you can take away from stonebridge because i have one myself and okay. i hope you don't steal my thunder on this but well what's been your your uh most amazing story i'm not going to steal your thunder because i'm going to talk about somebody who's just graduated okay so i have a young man who was our athletic prefect and took the role as a support in ninth grade and then in 10th through 12th grade, redefined it. We actually stopped calling him athletic prefect and called him a student athletic director because he, a student assistant, he represented himself to every coach. May I have meetings? And that's one of the things about leadership that we try to do, which is important. We try to get our students, once they get to high school, to represent themselves in their dealings with adults. Yeah. He, he redefined it. And now he just graduated and arguably, easily, the best athletic prefect in my 23 years there. And now he's going on to Longwood University. He's already got a position as a manager 
of one of their teams. His role, goal is to be a professional coach and athletic person. But we allowed him that opportunity. And then he took it and redefined it. And he is somebody, he's remarkable in that. And I hope he, if he's listening to this, I hope he doesn't mind. Ath academics were not his strength. Great guy, respectful, worked hard. But this is his strength. And this is what God has, the way God has created him. And now he's had an opportunity to develop that. And he's a remarkable young man because of that. So you said something really interesting. Academics is, were, were not his strengths. But this was a really highly academic institution. Like Stonebridge yes. was, was no joke when it came to academics. I mean, there, I mean, students go where they want to go after Stonebridge. Um, and so it's not just, but, but there were, whoever set up the system was aware enough. Academics aren't the, the only path. Their athletics aren't the only path. Service might be a path. Finding your niche, you can find your niche almost anywhere and find a place to lead. And I think that was pretty powerful. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So, so let me uh, switch gears and give you my story. Um, and uh, so I was dealing with, so when we had, and I uh, think I know what your story is going to be. I, I, I'm you... going to guess it. What? Uh, Foster? No. Jonathan Foster. Oh, okay. No. Go ahead. You're going, you, know, you can, you go ahead. You tell that story. So Jonathan Foster. Ooh. So he graduated a while ago. It's been what, 10, 12 years ago. And he, when he came to Stonebridge in the second grade, had such learning issues that there were concerns that he couldn't do it and he wouldn't survive. He worked so hard. That kid. But when I mean, he wow, what heart? Yeah. When that he got to high cool. school, he eventually was elected the chairman of the high school and was one of the best leaders we had. And then he went on into the military, I believe, and was one was a great leader in the military. But again, his strength wasn't what some schools would say would be the strength, academics. His so strength. That, good. That wasn't my story, but okay. Jonathan Foster, I can't say enough good things about that guy. I mean, he was just, he was awesome. Uh, yeah. My story was different. My story was about the retreats. So oh. I don't, if you remember uh, retreat in 2004, I think it was 2003, 2004, one of those. So if people don't know um, who are listening to this. So this private school, they'd have a, a couple of days, they'd take, kids away on a retreat for a few days like like overnight a few days um mm -hmm. to some camp somewhere and it would be kind of a bonding experience one of the things that they did however was that there is you know um you know there's shaving cream fight a bit that was a scheduled kind of thing and one of the things was that the seniors would uh be served by the freshmen every year and that was something where, and, and now when the, when the seniors had freshmen, almost like slaves serving them, they acted like any other human being that has uh, all power. And they would give me this, give me that, go, you know, and, and it just, I just found it unnerving. So um, the year before, yeah, so this would have been 2004. So the, the student body president, um, his name was Alex Johnson, great kid. Lo I still love the guy to death. He's, he's, um, my, in fact, my second son's name is Alex. Okay. Alex Johnson was the student body president. And I remember talking to him a lot. In fact, on the way back from soccer practice, I was giving him a ride home because he was in Virginia beach as opposed to some, wherever the game was in Portsmouth. So I gave him a ride back. Uh, and I remember talking to him. About, so Alex, if, if you do this, how are you not different than Hitler except in degree? <laughs> And no, I mean, yeah. sir, I, I was yeah. asking, like, like if you if you can run roughshod over people just because you have that power, right? How wrong is that just to do that just because you have power? And it, it real, I mean, you know, he took it to heart, and it wasn't, I mean, just me. Maybe he was thinking independently, but so that year they. Um, we went on the retreat and they, they got up and they went, uh, you know, they got the freshmen up in the middle of the night, ran them down to the lake. Now they historically would do that, throw them into the lake. So they ran them down to the lake and they washed their feet. Do you remember that? I do remember that. Yeah. It was a, wow. a change. Yeah. And then when it was time to serve, um, the principal says, uh, okay, it's time for the seniors to serve the freshmen. And he took the bullhorn from them and said, stop that. Freshmen, sit down. The seniors are going to serve you. Yeah. You remember yeah. that? I do. I, mean, I, I, do. I have goosebumps just telling the story. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, it was just, it was so remarkable. Like what a change and the atmosphere for the next few weeks that pervaded the school because they, they had learned some fundamental lessons of leadership and they were just, they were doing it right. I yeah. mean, wow. It was such a, a different experience when they were um, trying to lead by serving rather than trying to lead by, well, I'm a senior, so respect me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just such a different mindset. And, and I think the institution grew that kind of leadership organically, not even trying to necessarily, but just because that's the way that we thought about things. The awards that we give to our athletic teams are not best this, best that. We have Servant Leadership Award, Loyalty Award, Perseverance Award, and we also have an award for Most Improved. So the Servant Leadership Award, award I think most people look at as the highlight or the best award. And it is. That's what leadership is. It is about serving others. It's at, I think John Maxwell says it's adding value to others. Mm -hmm. And so we're learning to add value to others by seeing how we can help them. So it is part of the culture at Stonebridge School to learn to serve as a leader. And what you saw with Alex and we've seen in other places and, and I saw with Justin this year is that idea that I get to I get to lead because I get to serve. Yeah. So um, uh, we got to wrap it up because we've, we've gone way, too, way longer than I thought real quick, just because, um, you know, I, it's just like fun to go down, uh, trip down memory lane. Yeah. Uh, if anybody's interested in Stonebridge School, I'm going to put the link down uh, below and um, I, I'm going to wrap up with a quotation for contemplation for today it comes from Peter Drucker. See how well this fits with Stonebridge. He said this leadership is lifting a person's vision to high sights, the raising of a person's performance to a higher standard, and the building of a personality beyond its normal limitations. Wow, that's great, Darren. I, it, I, and that's like everything we were trying to do yeah. as we were trying to mold and help these students grow and to become what they should be. So, yeah. Jeff, come back again and uh, let's talk about uh, another topic, because when I was at Stonebridge, we'd spend a lot of time, you and I, talking either grading papers or up in the weight room or something about um, leaning at home. And I learned a ton yeah. about that from you. Uh, you were like my role model in that. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, as, as you remember, um, that's when I met my fiance and got married during that period while I was at Stonebridge. And so I learned a ton. Come back and we'll talk about uh, this a little bit more. Love to be my pleasure. Thanks, Darren. Right. Hey, thanks for listening to the Leadersmith podcast. And if this was helpful, I hope that you'll subscribe. And I hope this helps you become the kind of leader that you would want to follow.